Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix, and welcome to a brand new flyer. Yes, indeed, off camera, I've almost completed the Lathrixian Pride. All that's left to do now is create the aircraft, which will go on top. This is one of the prototypes for the smaller aircraft, because there's going to be four small and one large, and I also need to clean up the very top of the craft and add a propulsion system. Once all that's in place, oh, and the anti-missile system, the Lathrixian Pride is completed. So, let's see how far we can get today. Uh, right now, it's a bit out, and this um, ship's a bit open-ended. It's um, You can see all the vulnerable parts, but I'm just about to change that. The big thing with this is I don't want this to cost more than 10,000 metal. The Serpents cost just shy of 20,000, so if I can have these as half the cost, that would be fantastic. Um, this is again one of those times where I've made something which wasn't intended to be permanent, but I've ended up liking the look of it, so I think I'll work on it. So yeah, this is a currently unnamed kind of drone plane, as usual with my planes. It has no actual wings, because I don't like using wings. The more I use wings, the less I like them. This is a complete thruster craft. There are no wings to provide lift. Its only lift is through its thrusters and its own engine power, which it has a decent amount of, despite the small size. Uh, well, 125 isn't that amazing, but it's okay, particularly since we're not using an electric engine, which would probably be preferable for a small craft, but that would also mean it would always need to be used with an aircraft carrier. I like my ships to be independent. Strong independent aircraft, that's what I want. So, the big question is, how are we going to be using these craft? Now, I thought I'd start recording and start waffling on, rather than me thinking it to myself, as I find that's always a better idea for me. The big obvious one is, let's use missiles. We could use very small missiles, we could use these as an interceptor, we could have the fourth one as a bomber. That's a tried and tested method that tends to work. However, we've done that time and time again. So, is there an alternative? We could use cannons. We could. Cannons would be an option. However, cannons tend to be quite large if you want them to be even slightly accurate or slightly effective. So, if we use cannons on this, it would put it at a massive disadvantage. There's a reason why all the smaller um, vessels use missiles, because missiles are very compact, very easy to set up, and can be set up in a way that the small vessel doesn't have issues with it hurting itself. We could also have mines, so we could have a combination of mines and missiles, making it a kind of mixture of the Blight and the Serpent, making it an all-round craft, and that doesn't sound terrible to me. We could have two missiles here and here, both loaded on the top, and then we could have a very, very small mine system on the bottom. It would not take too much effort. And that's probably what I'm going to do. For the larger craft, we could and probably will try to go with either very weak laser weaponry or cannon weaponry. Probably going with cannon because laser weaponry does require a lot of engine power. So let's see if we can start that then. Stop moving! <laughs> the power of the sandbox mode. Back to the drawing board I went, and we now have prototype number two. Two. So this probably also won't be the finished design, however, it has a series of things about it which make it much better to be a swarm slash um, mass produced vehicle in comparison to the first attempt. The big thing to start off with is that it's faster. This thing is going a full between 80 and 90 um, velocity and it's also a lot cheaper. It only costs 5,200 metal. This thing is remarkably cheap, and it has everything you could need for it to be a true flyer. It has fuel regeneration, it has full ammo stores and ammo regeneration. It has everything you would need, and it's agile. So one of the big pros, though, with this, compared with the last flyer, is its erratic movement, which has been done purposefully, similar to the Flying Squirrel, but not, of course, as much as the Flying Squirrel. It makes hitting it with missiles and cannons quite difficult. I have tested that just a little bit. So probably something like this will be what the aircraft carrier uses. The big negative, however, is its ammo stores and weapon stores are significantly smaller because of its much smaller size, meaning it won't actually do that much damage. It will be annoying, but little else, which means we're going to have to fit it for something special. Now, several um, ships 
in the uh, AI, in the, what do you call them, the native factions, the factions you face on Nita, use planes which throw off flares as a form of defense against missiles, but the big thing is they, f they throw them off in such a way that they simply go f really flying off because of the natural movement of the plane. So what we're going to do is just that. Because of the erratic um, up and down and bumping this thing does, we could have very cheap one missile block sized flares that get thrown off upon a missile being close. And how we would do that is using the control, automated control blocks. We would simply have one of these attached nearby to wherever the flare is going to be. Let's just say for now it's going to be here. And then we use the, where are you, missile system, missile controller, just one of those, missile launch pad, there we go. Is that connected or is it going to have to go there? Okay, of course, like I say, this isn't going to be the finished area, so... Really, that's also not connected? Oh, because I've attached that sideways derp de herp de derp I really do hate how they attach. Anyway, okay, so in these we want one sticky flare and then one absolutely freaking anything. So this could be anything at all. We could have two sticky flares, in fact. In fact, let's do that. So two sticky flares, because why not? I'm sure there's a better thing to add there, which I... Oh, like a missile interceptor. That would actually probably be better, yeah. Okay, yeah, so missile interceptor and then a sticky flare. And do the same with that, just because it works better with the AI if that is actually present, that's why. And then we have these set to... When a hostile missile is closer than, and also effect range, let's have a 2, is closer than, I don't know, really close, honestly, if it's going to do this, 100 and whatever, 200, weapon systems, where are you, and fire systems. So if we test that... That went really close to us. That's actually rather cool. Okay, so that's the idea. So let's put this in a better place and have that sorted. Well, this is now five minutes into a test. There is an enemy serpent currently firing at this little gargoyle, as I've now called it, and so far not a single missile has hit. Uh, there is actually one... Okay, it's changed target right now, but there is actually one thing which I didn't even think about, which you just saw then. If you add a missile interceptor to the flare, it will actually detonate missiles upon contact. This thing is one of the most annoying things I've seen in the game, and I'm sure some enemy um, faction members have already started using it, but yeah, as you can see, the flares work absolutely fantastic. Um, and also, like I say, this one's declawed, it has no weapon systems, but yeah, very, very happy. Also still getting some weird frame loss at the moment, but other than that, really happy. Really, really happy with how that works. So the gargoyle, probably something similar to this, will be the end result. Just that little bit of movement on the missiles really affects them. And detonating them early also helps. After a lot more testing with missiles and the addition of two more interceptor segments and a quick test against a couple of marauders, I think this is pretty much done. Its max speed has been increased slightly to around about 90 with the addition of additional thrusters and it is not exactly looking too pretty though. So that will come later. The basic foundation for the aircraft though, which I'm going to be using, is here. So that's enough about the aircraft. Let's get back to finishing off the actual aircraft carrier. Well, it's time for a bit of a nerve-wracking test. I've not yet tested this out, so this could go horribly wrong. Just a warning. So, we have the serpent followed by two gargoyles named because of their sheer unattractiveness. They are currently set to be released with the serpent first, then the two gargoyles afterwards. The weapon systems on these should not fire until they are released, at least that's the theory and how I've tried to set it up. We've also removed the main cannons from the Lathrixian Pride because I'm going to be removing the main cannons from the Lathrixian Pride. We're instead going to have broadside weapons built into these cavernous areas here and I'm probably going to kind of alter the main section there to have a bridge and everything. So hopefully that will turn out quite pretty. Let's see how we do. Please work. There goes the serpent, that should go to its maximum altitude and then start the attack run. So should the two gargoyles. 
Okay, they've all been released. They haven't fired yet. Will they fire as soon as they go on the attack run? Yes, they will. Excellent. Well, that all worked out rather nicely. It, it has also been set up, so after the fight is over, they will be put back into the Lathrixian Pride's deck. So, put back onto the Lathrixian Pride's deck. Okay, they're all about to start their next attack run, hopefully very soon. I don't know why I'm worrying about the airplanes. I've, I've proven these things work. Yeah, there they go. The Serpent has a very long attack run. There we go. All nicely done. And the enemy has been defeated. Ha <laughs> ha! Well done, the Lathrixian Pride and its Air Force. So they should now just be gently floating back. Now, this is the reason why I've decided not to use the Lathrixian Pride as a medic bay as well, to bring the ships back. It's how slowly they come back. It just makes them so vulnerable. And there goes the Serpent. So, one problem you may have noticed was the sheer lack of the, sh the, the Air Force actually firing, and I think that's my fault. I did alter some of their weapon systems to only fire more specifically, and clearly that wasn't actually what was keeping them from firing on the deck. That was just me forgetting to turn them back, so that's a non-issue. Okay, lovely. Well, it worked. Now, here's the thing. There is two choices we can make here. We can either keep it like this and have possibly a third gargoyle, you know, just have it up as the standard kind of way. These all attach to sub-vehicle spawners, which, which they are. They all dock in nicely, and we simply replace the, the ships afterwards. Or, we could do like the Barracuda do, the Barracuda does, and be able to spawn in new ships when they're destroyed, or simply start off with no planes on, on deck and spawn them in as the battle continues. I think I'll probably stick with this one for now, but if we run into issues in the future, it, it'll be, it would be very easy to swap that. Okay, nicely done. You need to be prettier. So, we've seen the more traditional way of simply docking ships, uh, well, aircraft in this case, and allowing them to be released upon combat starting, and to be uh, recalled upon combat ending, but we could do a very different style of using aircraft, more so using them as drones or even weapons, as opposed to using them as more permanent things. Although this way can also be used in a permanent way, I don't like that kind of style, and the way I'm, I'm speaking about, of course, is simply creating the ships mid-battle, sending them out, all automated, and then after the battle simply scrapping them again, which can be automated. So, you see, you see there, I just scrapped a few ships because I was testing this out. So, what we have is this. We have an automated control block here, which has the constructible spawners every few seconds producing a default vehicle. The default vehicle simply being whatever the blueprint spawner has as a default vehicle. So let's set that to maximum of 10 lifetime spawns, and at any given time I want 3. And we'll just quickly make the gargoyle once more. And that is that. Okay. And let's put it a bit further away as well, just in case. And maximum health. Oops, it spawned that one in a little bit early, but you get the concept. So the adva so the automated control block just set the... <laughs> oh, this is going to go terribly. Just set the spawner to spawn in the gargoyle. There we go, it's off and away. And it will keep doing that every 16 seconds, at least giving the command, until three are in play. And then this will say, I am mother to three ships. And yes, it does refer to them as being the mother. It's currently the mother of one in three in play constructibles. So in 16 seconds it should, there we go, spawn the second gargoyle. This one however will be being held rather than everything else. What actually happened to that first gargoyle? I bet it's not a full health yet. Nope, it has half its thrusters missing and half its wing. Oh the poor thing. <laughs> oh well. So this will be produced again and then fired out. So the whole concept is that the aircraft carrier basically basically becomes a drone master. It will send these into fight, and then every time one gets damaged or destroyed, it will simply spawn in another and send it out again. Remember, these are very cheap. In fact, uh, just the regular ammunition processors for this ship itself probably costs more than these every 10 seconds. So we could have this on 10, if we really wanted to, and this will happen every time a battle commences. Of course we would have to reset these after battles, because it has a lifetime automatic spawn limitation currently, meaning that it couldn't do this forever. We could also use this, by the way, to have infinite drones. 
Oh god, well, I'm, 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 I am resisting making the gargoyle self-replicating. So, if you can imagine, this system, if you put this on a gargoyle and then had the exact same setup and then a couple of repair tentacles on the gargoyle, the gargoyle could literally spawn in gargoyles, that could spawn in gargoyles, that could spawn in gargoyles, and then you'd have infinite of the ship in question. Okay, I was just testing that, so yes indeed, it's no longer spawning in the third one because, well, sorry, any more than the third one because it's set to do just that, and there's the damaged one still. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. So we could have that. We could have a drone system. Uh, so essentially the aircraft carrier doesn't really hold the ships, but instead sends them to battle. Now we could still have them so that the ships are held. It could be a mixture of the two created and held afterwards, but I think I would rather have the simplicity of sending out masses of drones every battle, and the drones essentially being a weapon, and if they survive to the end of the battle, we scrap them and get their resources back. Hurrah! No problem there. And that could even make use of this area at the back. This could simply be a drone hangar or some form of drone... Oh, actually, the more I talk about it, the more I like this idea, as opposed to the more traditional way. Because I... You could, like I say, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so messed up now in my head because I'm thinking about several things, or perhaps I'm just generally messed up in the head. So, the two choices we have is this, having the ability to spawn in and then automatically scrap drone ships, which the gargoyle actually fits pretty well in. The gargoyle and the rotfly are both drone ships. We could have them in higher numbers by using several blueprint spawners or simply refreshing them when needed, or... Or we could have the more traditional way of holding better ships, like the Serpent, or possibly something even more expensive than the Serpent. Or we could have both. Oh, that's what I should do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So we'll have these automatic spawners on the back section here, and then we'll have three Serpents, or just two Serpents, or something, an improved Serpent, on the deck itself. That's going to take some time to produce, but that's what I think and I'm definitely going to do. The aircraft carrier has now evolved into a drone lord. Ah, sadly the phone just went and I am needed elsewhere and this recording session has been cut a little bit short, but I really want to put this video out today. Today being Monday, so let's see if it actually comes out in time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. This will be the last building video for a while. The next video will be us taking on the Onyx Watch, because I've decided that would be the smarter option to do. Upon destroying the Onyx Watch, we will be taking on the Steel Striders and the Grey Talons, I think I've decided. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's a little bit short video, then of course likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Next time I promise far more fighting and a completed ship.